Welcome to the Brush Lounge. Uh, we are back for part two with Gwen Brain, our guest, Evie Berenger uh, Hernandez. Why did I want to call you Garcia? <laughs> <laughs> what? Evie Baron Hernandez is uh, co-hosting with me. Uh, we've been talking about uh, cognitive behavior therapy, and if you watched uh, segment one, we kind of got into uh, some of the uh, conditions, some of the things that can happen uh, to cause us to need this type of uh, therapy and this type of support. This time, I want to talk a little bit about a couple of things. One, we said we'd go into, um, I said we'd go into some of the things that we can do uh, ourselves to help with processing our pain, processing suffering, processing uh, depression, anxiety, these types of, of things, stuff that happens to us. But uh, in the break, we got a chance to talk to Gwen. And so I think we better let Gwen kind of lead us into what happens in some of her sessions or some of the things that she might recommend um, for us uh, to help us. Every therapy, um, every therapist is different. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now there are rules and there are laws and there are guidelines that you all can use. And this is what's so beautiful about um, therapy, period. It's just like friendships and relationships and anything else that we do in family. You have to find what works for you, and that's okay. You know, you have to find what works for you. Um, Evie wanted to talk about food disorders and how CBT can help with that. Mm -hmm. So let's get into our, uh, our conversation. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Gwen, tell us about your practice, and when you send someone away after a, a therapy session, what, what does homework look like? What are some things that people can do at home? Yeah, so some of the homework that we use uh, really helps challenge our thought patterns. So for instance, um, someone might have a negative self-talk that when I walk down the halls at my business, my place of employment, um, people give me dirty looks. Mm. Uh, people don't like me, mm -hmm. okay? And it may not be true at all. Mm -hmm. And so they have this negative thought that they put a lot of energy into and they've been carrying it around and operating out of that negative thought by avoiding people and not talking to them or not walking down the hall or, you know, different things like that. And so uh, one of the homework assignments that we give is what we call the argument, what I call the argument. Mm -hmm. Somebody else may call it something different, but uh, I just take a piece of paper, mark it down the middle, and we put the, on the left side of the paper, we'll put the negative thought. The, or what I'd like to refer to as ineffective thought. I don't like doing negative and positive so much because it feeds into that all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about that ineffective thought. This is a thought that's not being helpful to this person. Not yeah. only is it not being helpful, it's creating a lot of emotional pain. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the paper, I have them argue with that thought all mm -hmm. the way down the sheet. So they don't write anything else on the left side of the paper, but they argue with that thought bringing evidence and bringing uh, supportive statements mm -hmm. that say that this ineffective thought is not helpful, mm -hmm. okay? So for instance, they might say, uh, when I walk down the hall, there are lots of people in the hall, surely not 100% of them are thinking me, at, about me. Mm -hmm. They probably have a lot going on in their minds. Mm -hmm. They're not even noticing that I'm even walking down the hall unless mm -hmm. I say something, you know, mm -hmm. and just really, really challenge that thought that everybody's looking at them. Mm -hmm. I like okay. that. That's good. And so uh, it's, I, I like to use it as an analogy for building muscle. So if you're walking around using this muscle all the time, it's going to be really big. Mm -hmm. And yet you have this other muscle, the healthy thought muscle or the effective thought muscle that is just limp mm -hmm. because you're not using it. You're using this ineffective thought mm -hmm. muscle. So you've got to start using that uh, healthier thought, more effective thought, mm -hmm. and then let the other one. Go and, and, and atrophy hopefully mm -hmm. over time so in order to do that muscle wise you've got to work out on a regular basis so I give people homework mm -hmm. so that every day they're working on those thought patterns and trying to make changes and trying to to move their uh, thought processes in a different direction mm -hmm. so that they have healthier thoughts so when they walk in it, we might even give them a behavioral exam, uh, experiment or behavioral exercise for their homework. Mm -hmm. When you walk down the hall, catch the eye contact with one person and smile at them. Mm -hmm. And just see what that feels like in them mm -hmm. and help them to recognize that 
perhaps no one's noticing maybe when they're staring at you because you're walking up all like mm -hmm. this, you know, mm -hmm. to really challenge some of their thinking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we're when, when you hear somebody say, they're they're looking at me. The work is with me, not mm -hmm. with the person that you <laughs> have every right to look at you. Yeah, yeah do I mean, your own work. work. Don't look at me. Yeah, do your own work. Because right. if you don't do that work where you are saying, you know, talking to yourself and, and having this conversation, you will become resistant, react, you will start reacting and um, retaliating just mm -hmm. off of a thought. And the person, you know, sometimes you hear people say she's crazy or he's crazy. Well, you know, they don't know what you are because you're saying something to them mm -hmm. and they're not guilty. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. But if you don't, the processing, that's just a part of processing mm -hmm. your, your yeah. and it reduces the opportunity for argument and, and uh, you know, uh, false belief about, right, about stuff. Right. One of the things that we teach in CBT in therapy is that a lot of us have expectations of ourselves mm -hmm. and expectations of other people. Mm -hmm. When we place expectations on ourselves, uh, if we start meeting them, mm -hmm. we don't get satisfied. We just raise the bar a little higher, mm -hmm. okay? We keep placing all these expectations. A lot of people say, well, why don't I place expectations on myself? That's motivating, that's mm -hmm. gonna pressure me to do better. Mm -hmm. But what we find is once you reach a certain threshold mm -hmm. uh, and you keep pressuring yourself, your, your productivity or uh, your functioning is actually gonna go down. Mm -hmm. you, you can't keep raising the bar. So what you do is you get to a level, and instead of having expectation and demands on yourself, you have goals that you're working towards, mm -hmm. but you're always accepting of where you are, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, when you place expectations on other people, the faulty part about that is uh, when you place shoulds and oughts and musts and have tos on other people, they don't know what your expectations mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. My husband does not wake up in the morning and say, I wonder, how I can make Lee happy today. Mm -hmm. I, he is thinking about, am I gonna get to work on time? Is the dog gonna poop in the time mm -hmm. that I have a lot of her to poop mm -hmm. in? You know, I mean, he's yeah. not thinking about me mm -hmm. and what my expectations are. He's thinking about what's going on in his own life. Mm -hmm. And so if he doesn't meet my expectations, that's, that's my fault for yeah. having an expectation, mm -hmm. right? And so you could say things like, it would be nice if he picked up the dry clean but you can also home, say like that. I've asked him, right? <laughs> yeah. And you change your expectation from a should, an ought, and a must of other people, or a should and an ought and a must from yourself to it would be nice. Mm -hmm. I would like. So, for instance, you have children, mm -hmm. and you might say to yourself, "I've got to donate ten thousand dollars to my son's wedding." Mm -hmm. And you know, a good mother would donate ten thousand dollars to her son's <laughs> wedding. And you might be walking around with this idea, and you don't even have ten thousand dollars. Right. You know, right. but you're walking around with this idea. I've got to give ten thousand dollars to my son's wedding. That actually happened. It wasn't ten thousand dollars, but my son and his uh, fiance, my immediate daughter in love, um, they're doing their wedding totally not a traditional way. Mm -hmm. So, as the the mother of the groom, I thought we should host the reception, I mean the, uh, what is it, the rehearsal we dinner. Because that's a tradition, we mm -hmm. host the rehearsal dinner. And so we're down to the wire. But um, I said to my son, finally, because I was trying to be so quiet and just let them do this amazing thing themselves, you know? Um, and so I finally said to him on Thursday, I said, well, um, Nicholas, I heard that you're getting dinner together at uh, Biffy Chase for, you know, the, the bridal party. I said, you know, the, the your, your family is supposed to do something, so we're supposed to do the rehearsal dinner. You know what he said to me? He says, oh wow, mom, we had no idea. And they have a wedding planner, and it stayed right there. I said, okay. And he says, mom, if you'd like to, no problem. But it could have turned into a big old something. Yeah, yeah. You know it what does, I'm because mm -hmm. people have ideas of what is expected and what's not. Mm -hmm. And if you can change that to, well, it would be nice, yeah, I would appreciate it, I would prefer, I would like, mm -hmm. and then let go of, like, I would prefer, or I would I would really like to be able to give my son $10,000 mm -hmm. for his wedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the pressure's off, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You just, it just lands differently in your body than mm -hmm. I should mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. And I have to watch myself a lot of times, you know, because my thoughts almost 
almost all of my shoulds are around my children. I should call them more often. I should not call them very much. Where's the right balance? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of coming. Do I call them? Do I not call them? Am I intruding in their lives? Am I not intruding? That happens. Isn't even, it, it's, it's even true when you're talking to other people. You shouldn't. There you go. Say, it. <laughs> <laughs> say should. You should do this mm -hmm. or you should do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what I would recommend mm -hmm. is uh, posing it as a question. Have you thought about? Mm -hmm. So she could have said to her son, have you thought about the tradition that typically happens in the United States that the uh, Grimm's family takes care of the rehearsal dinner? How would you like to approach that? Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying, you know, you know, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You, mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, so just trying different mm -hmm. words out that are not so black and mm -hmm. white, mm -hmm. all or nothing, rigid. do it or don't. Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of rigid thinking happens in people. And so, so many families do get involved in the wedding process. Me and his fiance are very independent um, and wanted to do their own thing. So I really, I've done my own work, you know, and I've kind of said, whatever they want to do, let them do it. If they need something from me, let me know and we will do it. Yeah. And so I've stayed away and given them the opportunity to enjoy themselves doing that mm -hmm. because of my own uh, process. So I worked in the wedding business for years. I watched moms and dads say, you cannot have this, you can't have that. We control the guest list, we control the this, we control all those kinds of things. And I said, I wasn't gonna do that in this case. Yeah. And I think it's been beautiful, a beautiful journey for us. Yeah. But yeah. that doesn't mean that I didn't have some of those expectations. Right. I just said, oh, I remember that mom saying, I remember that bride being mm -hmm. so humiliated walking down that aisle. And I was like, I'm just going to let them do whatever they want to do and just sit and be the support. So, yeah. Yeah. son, you will not be getting $10,000. <laughs> <know. laughs> well, and it's their journey. And, yeah. Yeah. and, yeah. and letting go of the thought that it's about you or that you should contribute yeah. to it, well, it is in reminding yourself that it's their journey. Mm -hmm. Some uh, moms or families will try to live out the wedding, the dream wedding that they wanted through their own children. You know, their dresses become more important than the bride's dress and all this kind of thing. We're doing tennis shoes at this wedding. That was hard for me to do, but if that's what they want, I'm in it. I'm yeah. gonna, yeah. Uh, they've even asked me to walk down the aisle with my children's father, which we've not been married for over, what, 15 years now? I said, if that's gonna make them happy, I'm willing to do whatever makes them happy. We're good friends now, so whatever makes them happy. We've got a few minutes left and we have to talk about food disorders with Ms. Gwen yeah. and how this whole cognitive behavior uh, uh, therapy can help with something like that right. too. And we actually may want to do a whole episode on yeah. yeah. food because mm -hmm. lots of women have unhealthy relationships with food. Mm -hmm. So we could do just a teaser and we yeah. can yeah. We yeah. pick it up yeah. next yeah. Monday. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that would so, be great because like I said, lots of women and I've been down that path before myself. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, so people find safety in that in mm -hmm. eating. So eating people find a lot of things in eating. <laughs> I'm well, yeah. well, but go ahead. I, well, yeah. Let's I, if we want to table that for next time. Um, I'm happy to do that. I, what really made me think of that is I just um, I don't know if you've heard of that book. I just got through reading it. I'm talking about it all the time. It's called Genius Foods. No, I haven't. <gasps> you've got to read it, especially you. Okay. It's called Genius Foods. It's by yeah. an MD. Um, it's he's Max Lucasier. I think his name is, hmm. and he talks about how foods affect your brain, mm -hmm. and he's done a lot of research um, all over the world mm -hmm. uh, with, it sounds like the best of the best, mm -hmm. on how, how food affects your brain, and he actually goes into how drugs affect the brain as well, wow. and um, you know, he goes up into how sinus drugs affect the brain, and it can cause Parkinson's, on, you know, and, and wow. Alzheimer's, and all, all of that. It's 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 very interesting, and um, and blood pressure and all mm -hmm. kinds of different drugs. But um, so I want to know how therapy can help because so many of us struggle, especially Americans, the way the food industry. And he talks about how the food industry. Uh, has really um, gone in the direction of <laughs> promoting um, addiction. 
Yeah. Oh my and goodness. So yeah, and I and I've I've, I've read another book, Weed Belly, which really talks about that a lot yes. as well. And so there is a lot a big weight problem with with Americans, I believe, because of that. And so um, I think that there are a lot of issues that get brought up, and someone who has been up and down her whole life. I see where people do struggle with uh, body image and um, with uh, their, uh, you know, how confident they are. And so I think it's important. Um, and I want to see how this therapy can really help with that. Yeah. Well, get, go ahead. How much what you're eating is affecting those things, your mm -hmm. mood, your confidence, and all of these things. Monosodium glutamite, mm -hmm. I cannot have, and it's in everything. Mm -hmm. Every time I went to the emergency room for a migraine, monosodium glutamite was in the food that I had been eating. I did not know. So you can be thinking that you're eating healthy, mm -hmm. and you're not, and be getting treatment for something that has very little to do with what's really going on with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. MSG in food causes something to taste good that doesn't really have a taste. Mm -hmm. It's approved by the FDA, but it could definitely lead to someone needing therapy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, it can really, and we can talk about food uh, till we're blue in the face because there's so many different layers of that. Mm -hmm. You have the food industry whose job is to make money. Mm -hmm. If their job is not to give you necessarily something that's good for your body. Their job is to make money. And the bottom line of profit drives a lot of what's happening. I mean, they hire psychologists and tasting people. They spend millions every year trying to make a particular chip, for instance, taste in such a way that you would want a second one mm -hmm. and a third one. And before long, you've gone through the whole bag. Everything which, is marketing. And not worrying about how that impacts the body. They want you to want more and more and more of it. So uh, we joke about a lot of these cereals that we eat as being crack. Oh my gosh, get that away from me. That's like crack. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does hit the reward system in the brain. Yeah. Very similar to crack. Mm -hmm. So you can see why people joke and say, get those chips away from me or that cereal away from me. That's like crack. There's even a dessert called crack, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because people can't stop eating it. And I was at a party at Christmas time and somebody had brought some and I tasted it and I know why they can't stop <laughs> eating it because I could not stop eating it. And because it hits all those things mm -hmm. involuntarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about tremendous amount of willpower to walk away from something mm -hmm. after you've already gotten a hit. Mm -hmm. So how so. much of the food disorder, how much of the um, trauma, how much of the anxiety, how much of the depression is masked by what we're eating? Yeah, a lot, a lot. So uh, there's so many different layers. Everything we talk about, it seems like I'm always mm -hmm. saying there's so mm -hmm. many different layers, but mm -hmm. there is a lot of layers when it comes to eating disorders mm -hmm. because food is uh, starts feeling like it's not your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not fuel, mm -hmm. especially when you're eating something and it triggers things in your brain that makes you want more or triggers things in, in your brain that makes you feel worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got the whole, how is the body responding to this? The insulin spikes mm -hmm. and then craving more carbohydrates because your insulin is going up and, and different things like that. It just, so much is impacted by what we eat and how which then leads to this relationship with food mm -hmm. that we develop, even involuntarily at the whim of the food industry or at the whim of how we were raised to have a relationship with food. You know, I grew up with an emotional eater. Mm -hmm. um, when I came home after having a bad day, mother solved everything with cookies and milk or mm -hmm. ice cream, you mm -hmm. know. And it did, made me forget, but what that did was generate more emotional eating within me. Mm -hmm. No one ever handed me carrot sticks and celery, me uh, or mm -hmm. sat down with me mm -hmm. and just loved on yeah. me and said, you know, it's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
food was thrown at us. And I have to watch myself because I find myself repeating a lot of those same patterns is people will be in a bad mood and I'm like, can I get you something to drink or eat? Mm. You know, just that, let me be a hostess yeah. here because I don't know how to solve your problem. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're uncomfortable sitting with other people's emotions. It's mm -hmm. just a lot easier to hand them something to mm -hmm. eat. And a lot of yeah. what you end up treating is inflammation in the body that's having an impact on causing uh, anxiety and all these other things, inflammation, um, white sugar, uh, salt, these are just as, can be just as potent as crack, you gluten. know, they're white gluten. drugs, gluten. gluten. I can leave America and eat bread anywhere and it does nothing to me. I eat bread here and I break out in hives almost instantly. Food, I, I get so embarrassed because when I go to places um, where I'm invited, I can't, I have to, what's in that? What's in that? Evie has witnessed it. <laughs> can, I can't have it. Can I, can I speak to the chef? Can I speak to the cook? Can I see the box that this was prepared with? Because monosodium glutamide is in that. Nitrates, all these things, I am affected by it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where it happened or why it happened to me, but it causes those migraines. I'm so grateful. This is the first of the year. I am 21 days, 20 days into this year, and, no, and I'm migraine free. But that takes so much work that I almost need CBT therapy <laughs> just to be able to manage what I can't eat um, because of the, um, you know, the the there's shame associated with it. I don't want to go places because I don't want people. Well, what's wrong with her? Why she can't eat my eat eat my food or or why isn't she doing? It should be yeah, just she's normal. Yeah, so high maintenance. Yeah, yes. she's so high maintenance. Yeah, all the time. yeah. yeah. And that's, but, that's, that's it, but you almost have to be that way to defend yourself against yeah. all the different things. Mm -hmm. Advertising, I was watching, um, I think my husband was watching the last of the game last night, and there was a commercial, it was a hamburger commercial, and they made it so inviting. Mm -hmm. And the first thought I had after the commercial was over is like, dang, I'd like to have a burger right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even eat burgers, you know, on rare occasions are you going to see me, like maybe once a year, mm -hmm. you know, but that was my first thought was, mm -hmm. man, that just looks so good. Mm -hmm. It was these strips with stuff and cheese mm -hmm. and some special sauce with yeah. ranch and I'm like, and flavors popping mm -hmm. all and, and they were so excited mm -hmm. about their food. Yeah. And I'm like, you know. <laughs> who are you kidding? Yeah, I mean, we have got to look at that and say, who are you kidding? I know I'm going to go to that restaurant. I'm going to get that burger, and it is not. I'm not going to have that orgasmic experience with this food. <laughs> yeah, you know, like they're having on TV. Euphoria, right now. and then you get right. there, not euphoria. It's not going to oh, solve God. all of my financial problems yeah. and my relationship issues. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of people. Anyway, I do think we need to go Deeper. more specific okay. with people who are having issues with food. Not just marketing and mm -hmm. eating food that's bad for you, but how it impacts the brain. Mm -hmm. And um, I probably don't have all the answers like this, these people who write these books, yeah. but I'd love to have the discussion, and especially with eating disorders. I used to be an eating disorder specialist oh, years ago. Yay. And so oh, I, I still wait. work with people with eating disorders. Mm -hmm. So Very cool. uh, talking about how do I change my relationship with food mm -hmm. and how do I change my relationship with my body. But I do think we need more time for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I hope we teach you enough to tune in next time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll do it. So we're going to hear from an eating disorder specialist. Take a whole 30 minutes on that. That's Evie's going to share. Um, you're looking at her and she's beautiful, but Evie, quickly tell them how, what, how, what your transformation has been about. Well, and maybe I'll share some pictures with you. Yeah. Um, some before and afters. Um, so uh, I was pushing almost 300 pounds mm -hmm. um, and I went to my um, general doctor. Me and my mom go to the same doctor and she's very healthy, she's beautiful, Dr. Yana. Mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, sat me down and said, listen, you've got high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and you're pre-diabetic, and unless you get it under control and putting you on the same medication that your mom is on for diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I was in my early 40s, and I told her, nope, I'm not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I've got a long history of diabetes in my family, mm -hmm. we're Hispanic, and um, so I decided to educate myself, and that's when I uh, read the book Wheat Belly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and started reading, just reading and reading. I've always been interested in nutrition. Even though I've always been heavy, I've always read a lot on nutrition. I always tell people, you'd be amazed at how unhealthy people really do know a lot about nutrition, you know, because we want to be healthy, we really do. And um, so that really prompted me. And then I really, I, I started a program that really helped me watch my intake, my calorie intake, which I had no idea. And then from there, I uh, eventually started an exercise program and, and did it that way. Yeah, that's fantastic. So this, this is a prelude to a much bigger conversation that is coming, mm -hmm. and we're excited about it. Gwen has to make her way back to the real work that she does. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for being with us again uh, today, sure, Gwen. Thank you. Uh, so her fun. expertise is amazing. In this, uh, when you watch this television, um, broadcast there's going to be a blog next to it so we're going to pull some of uh, uh, Gwen's resources so as you're watching you can also be reading and you can learn more about health we don't get to talk about it at all we're here to really build a relationship mm -hmm. we want people to be comfortable in this lounge we want people to know that you can be comfortable getting help and that's I think my biggest goal for this program is to create connection mm -hmm. some simple belonging and for people to find safety in a space and this is family yeah Thank you so much for joining us. Look for a new episode of our podcast at, uh, on iTunes, on Google Play, and Spotify. And Gwen is going to be joining us again. Evie, let everybody know who you are. Evie Baron Hernandez. Monique Walker, thank you for joining us.